So I realize in class that it's a little difficult to see the board sometimes and other things. So I want to record this really fast to show you how to use RS links, how do you create a new program, and how do you add the hardware using our trainers. So if you take a look right here, here's the different pathways that I could find through RS links. Um, again, we're in our class, we're going to do everything through USB or this AB virtual backplane. You could use either one. They're doing the same thing. So if I wanted to look for something, I open uh, open up uh, the little plus sign there and I see my hardware. So this is my PLC. Right here is my PLC. And it's basically connected via USB. Okay? So if I expand the PLC, I see two different things. I see Ethernet, I see Compact Bus because there's two pathways that which my processor can get information either by ethernet or via the backplane by a complex compact bus so if i hit the plus sign i'll see my two cards my input output card and my analog card now slot zero is always going to be the processor slot one and two is whatever it comes in order from left to right in the processor and if i right click on any of these I can click on device properties and Bob's your uncle. There's your, your revision type right there. Now, this is a good starting point, but not the only way to do, go about things. I can click on this, right click on the processor up here as well, and I can get device properties. And again, I need to always match my revision, uh, my firmware revision to the software I use to program. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and other information. Now, I can also right click on here and I can do module configuration. And it's through here where I can change the IP address of my processor. So right now, this is my IP address. Um, I'm going to keep it this way so I can keep doing some advanced stuff. Um, yours is going to be um, 192. Yours is going to be 192. 168. 1.7. All right. So that is your IP address that sh you should see right here. And network mask of 255 right here. So this should be 255. Uh, so 255, 255, 255, 0. So this is what yours should say. Okay. Um, moving forward, you know, other things you can, you can activate. You can see network connectivity to it. Uh, as well and other fun things. So I, can, I cancel out of that. If I expand my ethernet, I'll, I'm gonna see nothing through here. If I want to communicate with anything plugged in that, that's matching the subnet mask, what I need to do is right click on the ethernet and go to properties. And it's gonna give you all the possible EIP addresses that you could connect to. Well, I know that I wanna connect with basically these right here and now all i'm doing is holding down control and highlighting multiple things and if i hit add that's going to show up there in your case in your case um you're looking for one nine two one six eight one dot two that will be your distributed io okay so make sure you look for that in this list here. If I hit apply and OK, you'll see some things show up here. Ta-da! All that fun stuff just showed up there um, because what I basically did was use my processor as a bridge. I can add more if I want to, and it'll find it potentially. Um, I'm going to add some of these because I'm curious. But we're st well, this is our starting point. Now this here. Whatever matches this here is your distributed I.O. That's on your trainer. And this is the IP address of that on your trainer. So what this should be this IP address if you pull it up. Um, and if I expand that, it's going to have, two, again, two different things, backplane I.O., point bus port, device net. They're, they're not the same, but for our, for our purposes in our class, they are the same. 
So I'm just going to expand the backplane. And again, I see my, my Ethernet adapter that's in slot zero, and I got all my cards. Do note that this has a six slot card, a, a six slot chassis. And um, right here is all of our input output cards in that distributed IO. And if I right click on any one of them, it's going to give me the information as well as the revision type, which is going to be important in the future. Okay. But this is how I navigate RS links to get the information. This is what we did last week in our lab. Okay. Um, I, and now we have the steps. Now, what do I do with this to, start to create a program? You're going to look for a software called Studio 5000. And when you start, and we're going to start from scratch, and we'll walk you through the whole process. But keep RS links open because you may need to refer to it. But I'm going to create a new project. And now I need to find my processor. Well, I don't know my processor, so let me go over here. And look, right here, it says it's a 179L36ERM. So now I find that. 179. Now you might get something that looks like this. Um, we're in compact logic. Just go with it because, again, if you open one of these, you'll see your number isn't there. So let me go to compact logic 57, you know, 57, uh, 5370, and ours is going to be the very last one. If I give it a name, so I'm going to give it a name of INDT 205 first. Okay. I can browse where it will be saved. I think it will only save local on your, on your, I would always save it to your desktop. Hit next. And now this is going to come up. Hey, remember when I said you need to make sure your revision matches? Well, I got two revisions of this software on my computer, 21 and 23. I need to make sure that whatever my revision is, so in, my, in device properties, tw the major revision of 23, that that matches on Studio. So see, so you can see both of them at the same time. See how this right there matches that. Now I hit finish. Make sure, in our class, we're probably gonna use 23 for the most part. I hit finish, and now it's gonna open the software. I'm gonna close this. So this is what things look like once you open the software. A couple things to keep in mind. Up at the top here, will be the name of your program. I've had to change it to blank because I had some computer issues. Don't worry about it. This is the controller that we just put in, as well as a version number, okay? Um, right here, this area here will give me my status. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, the most important thing you see here is right here, communication path. If there is nothing here, then you're not going to be able to download anything to anywhere. Because this establishes and points in the direction of where you want to send this program that you're going to program with. For all intents and purposes, if you see anything that has a bunch of E's here, it's, it means there's an error. It won't let you download either. So for right now, I'm just going to delete that. Okay. And, um, and notice over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set up my computer communication pathway. Um, nothing's there. Let me hit the little who's active button. And this should look like RS links, correct? Well, let me find our, our controller. And look, if I highlight it, everything lights up right here. Okay? All I'm going to do here is hit set communication path. And now, if you notice, this goes from blank to something there. Okay? Over here is where I do a lot of my programming. For our class, we're not going to worry about anything in motion groups, add-on, instruction, data types, and trends. We're only going to look at what's here in controller and with the blank name. We're going to look here um, at the main routine, and we're going to look here at our I.O. configuration. What you're doing in class, uh, what you did in class uh, in, uh, on the second week was set up your own I.O. configuration based upon what you found last week. All right? So the first thing you have to do is let's start with the bus. If I right click, I can have a new module. And if you look at the inside flap of your, your, you know, click on catalog and all the stuff is here that is, is, could be associated with that. If I look here at my catalog, I see this right here, seven, the catalog number for um, one of my cards, but I think uh, it's not the right card, my first card. So do it in order from left to right. 
And if you look on your processor, on the inside flap, you should see IQ6. And look, this is my digital input card. Let me hit create. It's going to ask for a name. Don't worry about it. You can assign it slot. It should be slot one. Don't worry about this. This compatible module is going to, you know, you may, in some cases, you may need to change that, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. It's going to default to the right property. Hit OK. Now look, my first card has been added based upon the catalog number. If you go up to controller tags, I'm going to go in and add the analog as well. So I know this is my analog here. Um, I think it's IF4. Yep, IF4. Hit create, same thing. Slot 2, everything's hunky dory. Let me hit OK and close. If I go up to controller tags, you'll notice now local 1C, local 1I, local 1. Z o, that's an O, not a zero, et cetera, et cetera. Whenever I add hardware, it automatically brings in tags that's associated with that hardware. So that this is where I get my information for my inputs and outputs. For my inputs, they're all going to be under local one I data dot zero one two three. Okay. Um, those are my, those would be my switches. We're really going to just focus on these two. Same with my outputs. Local one o data dot zero one two three four five. This is how all my in outputs are are addressed. Okay, you're not going to worry about here. This is for advanced users. Um, local two i. Those are for my analog. Don't worry about that. So now I want to add my Ethernet adapter because I want more than just two switches and four lights. If I right click on Ethernet, I can do new module, and I will type in the Ethernet module uh, a, a 71634 ANT. Now, this is important that why we looked at RS links, okay? If you look at RS links, you'll see that it's a AENT series B. And if I right click on this device properties, you'll see it's running revision five. You'll also see if I expand, it's a six slot chassis look what i have to do right here series b notice i can do b or a revision five and i need to change the slash chassis size to six hit okay hit yes and i need to give it a name i always give it a name a and e and t because i know that's my distributed io do that the other thing i have to do is give it an ip address name okay um I'm going to look back at RS links and I'll see that my IP address is 10.36.95.253. So yours is, as I said, something earlier. Um, 10, what, uh, 10, 156.95.253. All right. Make sure you define that. You can always click on this private network and change this to two. So when you do yours, just do this right here and make sure that this here uh, there's a two right there that goes in here okay so i hit okay i hit okay and now i i need to cl close because when the ether the internet's being communicated via this adapter if i want to add the cards i got to right click on the the six point chassis new modules and now i can add my cards three four i b eight creates okay so o b uh, four e and you can, and I want you to add the analogs. I'm not. So now all that's hunky dory. And so now if I want to download this to the controller, I right click on, I can right click here. There's a few different ways. I always just right click here and then go to download. And now this, and now it's going to, you know, say download. I hit yes. And now it's going to download everything.
and now I can change the remote run. And now look, there's if this is green right here, if this says I OK, you added everything right. OK, now something I want to point out is there's three different statuses for um, the program right here. There's program mode, run mode and test mode. We're going to stay with program mode and run mode. If I go to program mode, it's blue. That means none of my outputs will turn on. My inputs will be fine, but if I try to turn on outputs, it won't happen. Um, I can monitor inputs, and that's about it. Now, I can program outputs and do things, that, but nothing will turn on. So if you're having nine times out of ten beginning students that won't get their programs to work, it's because they're in remote program mode versus remote run mode. Um, if I go to run mode, this is, well, is like you're in full go, and it's always green. So you can turn on outputs and turn things on. So just to show you that we're communicating, I'm going to go into my local I.O., and I'm going to push a push button right here, and you should see it toggles to one. And you can see th that these change here. If I flip a switch, another one shows up. Now I can do that on my distributed I.O. as well. AANT slot one input now and see how it's communicating. Now remember how I said how is things connected? If things are connected through the AANT, it's slot one. Is it an input? And then it gives me the bit. Think of it that way as you move forward. More on that next week. I can also do my outputs, so ANT2 outputs, and I can just go in and start changing these to ones. And it turns on my lights. Okay? And that's how you can see if you're online and connected, or a quick and dirty way. Okay? Um, a couple other things. If I click on this here, this will give me my controller properties. If I need to clear a fault, I can do that through here. If I want to change this date and time, right now this date is good, but I can also sync, set it for my workstation so everything connects. Um, I can do some other advanced stuff. I don't need to do that. I can change its name. If I need to change a controller itself, if, if I'm offline, so if I go offline, offline, nothing's there, I can go in here and change my controller to something else or different software versions. All right, so that's a cool thing that you may need to be aware of. Um, again, all your programming you've done to main your team, make sure there's no errors if you're going to download the test. So uh, that should do it. I hope this was helpful um, and a good, good walkthrough on how to do this. Okay, thank you for your time.